Well, those are the first three that we've had this year. They're all doing good. Go check on some of the newer ones. That one was born just this morning, so he's obviously doing pretty good. Our th three newest additions, so we're up to six now. How are you doing, buddy? One born this morning is probably the biggest out of all three. <laughs> you just want the calf, right? Well, that was unfortunate. Wrong place at the wrong time. Well, we got that calf treated and she's back with mama now, so everything's right in the world again. Well, we've been uh, getting a bit out of the really freezing cold weather and a bit more towards the uh, days being around freezing lately, which has uh, really brought the snow down a lot. And I know that it's gonna start making the ground kind of mucky once all the frost starts coming out. So I'm really hoping that this morning I can, well, the ground is still frozen. It was still pretty cold last night down, I don't know, 10 below or something like that. Um, but that uh, freezes the ground back up at night. And I'm gonna try to use that opportunity to get the last of the cedar I've been working on. I got a pile there and I've got a bunch more dragged out to our burn pile. I just gotta get them cut up and I'm gonna hook on to the um, log arch, the homemade log arch that I built a while ago. I'm gonna hook onto that. Try to get the rest of those in here before the ground gets too muddy. And then hopefully that'll uh, keep me busy through the muddy time of year. Great, we're all hitched up. Let's go get some logs. Well guys, here's what we're looking at for today. I've got the one, two, three, there's four trees that I have to um, get cut up so I can drag them up. And I've still got a few logs here and over there that I've already cut into lengths and that that I can take up. This is all cedar. Well guys, I thought I'd maybe bring you right in and show you, you know, what I'm kind of thinking on this log. So it's obviously cut just how it came off when it fell down the tree. So I'll go to kind of the shortest point I can find. And then I'll just come up here. This is one of the biggest trees that I have right here right now. So, I'm, you know, when you're thinking about what you're going to cut it into, obviously um, the biggest thing I think I'm looking for right now are like six by six posts to use on different things. And the longest thing I can cut is up to 16. So I'm going to measure right down to 16 here. And then what I'm going to do is just kind of, you know, check with my tape. Do I think I could get a six by six post at 16 feet long? and it's looking like I probably could. It might not be, you know, like a perfect one. There might, might be like maybe a little bit of bark on the very bottom, but you know, for around the farm, that's okay. Um, a lot of the times the posts we're using to make buildings and stuff like that, we stick in the ground. 
So hopefully this one will work out good for a six by six. So I'm just gonna cut it. You know, it was 16 feet to right here, so I'm just gonna cut it down here to give give myself lots of extra length to make sure that once I get it all squared up, it'll be a full 16 footer. So gonna cut it right there, and then as you can see, maybe the rest of this log I can measure how long I think I'll get a few two by fours or something like that out of it and then make a cut down there further at 10 feet or something like that so just thought I'd show you kind of how my brain works when I'm looking at what lengths to cut a log into well it is super windy right now so I apologize if the sound quality is pretty bad but I got my uh, first 16 foot log there so I'm just going to measure down and see what else I can get out of this tree. And there's 8 feet. And if I come down to 10 feet, just by eyeballing it, I think if I go much further than that, I'm not going to get much out of it. So at 10 feet, I can probably still square it off at, you know, your 3.5 or 4 inches pretty easily. So that'll give me a few two by fours 10 feet long so I could always use those so that's 10 feet I'll just cut it up here somewhere and then uh, that's what I usually do I always cut it quite a bit longer than you know the the length that it's gonna end up finished at and then you can always you know when you're building your project you just do your final cut there with the miter saw or what have you so I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but this log I'm about to cut up right here. It's pretty warped. There's, um, it kind of kicks up right at the end there, and then it does a bow in the middle here. And unfortunately, that's just kind of the, the stuff that kills you on a sawmill because once you get it all squared up, uh, there's not really much left. So. What I usually do on these kind of logs is cut them into uh, like your shorter eight or 10 foot stuff because if you try to go too long, you're just gonna end up cutting most, uh, most of the log up before you even get anything out of it. The stuff grows like weeds, so I don't really uh, have any bad feelings about cutting it down at all. There'll be 10 more in its place next year probably, but uh, I know they don't grow that fast, but you know what I mean? They, they really, really grow fast, so. Um, this one was kind of growing in a clump of other trees, so we cut this one and another one out of there to let the other ones have a bit more room to grow. So if we get a few 2x6s or 2x4s out of it, it'll have done its uh, job for us, I think. And again, I thought I'd just show this uh, doing the same thing. Um, it never, I'm looking through the screen on the camera right now, it never seems to show up as pronounced on camera as in real life but there is quite a curve in the bottom of this log it always seems to be right in the bottom at the biggest point which really kills you because when you're making a straight cut it comes you know cuts like just a bunch off and you end up with not getting as much lumber as you would like i know a lot of the hardwoods and stuff here on our farm they grow a lot straighter for the most part these cedars just don't but like i was saying it's what we have around here i mean we have this whole woods here and it's pretty big it goes like all the way there and back that way quite a bit and then it's on the other side of this trail too and it goes back there and way up there quite a bit and that is all 90 percent cedar trees through all of that and so i don't really have any reservations about thinning that out a bit um, i even want to try getting some trails made in through there at some point just to make it easier to get in at but anyways if you're wondering you know why i'm bothering with stuff that's bent and not the biggest that's why so that's what we have here and it's actually starting to add up in there so i should have a pretty decent little pile of cedar to cut up there soon well guys i was in the middle of talking to you guys and i just noticed that we've uh we have a couple bulls back here 
because we've separated them from the cows for calving season, they're always trying to figure out a way how to get back to the cows, obviously. And I just noticed that one of them has kind of wandered back here across the gate that uh, leads into my sawmill. And I've been trying to keep it shut lately, but I just noticed that old habits die hard and I've actually left it open. So I decided to quickly grab onto one of these logs and bring it in because I don't want the bull going in there thinking it's a way to get back to the cows because there's uh, it's not completely fenced off in there and you can definitely get out into the wild. So better go get this shot. And you can see here, just a little guy and he's pretty good at weaseling his, his way into things. guys but the last couple days every th time I touch something metal I just get this big jolt of electricity uh, I'm not really sure why that's happening um, I have a loose idea about it's you know static something something but I'm not a, I don't really have a good understanding of why that happens and it's kind of annoying because it's happened about 20 times today and you know like from time to time in the past, I'd get shocked like that, but it seems to be happening like a lot right now. And it'd be nice to know why that's happening so much to me. Well, I just noticed you can actually see the uh, rye starting to come up. Well, not starting to come up. It was planted last fall. And uh, it's, so it's been there all winter, but you can actually see it again without the snow. So I might have to go back and take a look at that. Well, here's a couple more in here. Starting to get a little bit muddy coming in here. Mud on the bottom of the logs, but even so, that's one of the reasons that I like this log arch so much was because I knew this time of year, you can see maybe the bottom six inches of this log or so. It's getting a bunch of mud on it, but if it wasn't for this log arch, that w that's what the whole log would look like right now. So it's definitely doing its job in that respect. I just took a quick inventory and I've got 20 cedar logs in here right now. And then over here, I've already brought in, there's three cherries and three basswoods. So that's 26 logs in here right now. Everything else I have out there is cedar and I'll probably get another 10 to 15 logs to bring in so that'll give me a really decent amount in here to concentrate on for you know my operation anyways i'm not like a big sawmill operation or anything it's just a little hobby that i have and cut lumber up for around the farm and whatnot so that's been my plan is to get as much in here now while it's still frozen up even though it's starting to not become frozen up but if i can get those in here in you know today kind of thing then i'll be laughing i think for quite a while hopefully until the uh ground all thaws out and dries up again so that's the plan anyways i better get back to bringing some more cedar in here going on guys they're up and at them now what are you thinking buddy want to come and say hi <laughs> no, I don't think he does. Well, don't let me interrupt, guys. I was just checking in. She doesn't look like she's even moved all morning, but probably has. That might just be her favorite spot. How are we doing in here, Ma? Well, everything in here looks good too, eh, Mama? Yeah. 
Well, so I got all the trees out here cut into lengths. That gives me nine more logs that I have to bring into the sawmill now. And man, this time of year, things sure change fast. All this ground out here, just about an hour ago, it was all frozen. And it's really windy here. That's been a common theme lately. So I apologize if the audio is crappy, but this was completely frozen about an hour ago. And you can probably see now that's like a mud pit and it continues on all the way up to where I go into the mill and it's still frozen in there, but out here it's getting muddy. The next couple nights are supposed to get really cold again. So in an optimal situation, I, pr I would probably wait until the morning to do this, but I'm not going to be able to be around to do this. Today's kind of my shot to get this done. So although I'd rather not drag this through the mud, I think this time of year, it's kind of a fool's errand to wait much longer. I think it's only going to get a lot worse before it gets better. So I'm going to try to get these in here now while it's not too bad. And like I was saying earlier, I do have the log arch, so that definitely helps a lot. Well guys, that's exactly the type of stuff I was hoping to avoid, but at this point, in for a penny, in for a pound, I think. So, I've only got a few left, and uh, I'm not too happy about dragging these logs through that stuff, but what can you do other than wait and pray? But I don't think that's a very good strategy either. You can see that as soon as you turn into the wooded area here, it's still completely frozen and other than my muddy tracks, it's pretty nice in here, but unfortunately most of the way here isn't like this. All right guys, a lot calmer in here out of the wind. Uh, I did a final tally. I think I got 29 cedar logs here. So with the three cherries, three basswoods over there, that gives me 35 logs pulled in here. That should uh, keep me busy for a little while, which is a good thing. You can see my path coming in, it's getting covered in mud. So these logs are getting covered in mud now, but uh, I think my plan to get everything in here before it started getting muddy was probably 90% successful, 10% disaster, but no, I shouldn't say disaster. The 10% the of them got per, kind of muddy on the ends of them. So definitely going to have to make sure I watch for that, clean that off when I'm uh, cutting them or else I'm going to end up with some pretty dull blades pretty quickly. But anyways, I'm happy to get that done. Um, the log arch held up good. There's still quite a few little improvements I want to make. Some people have made some good suggestions. So um, it, now that we're not going to be taking anything out of the woods, it might be a good time to work on that. I think uh, that's going to be the good plan for the next little while. I've got lots to keep me busy at the sawmill. And, you know, once I get this cut up, it would be nice to actually use some of the lumber for some stuff. So I might have a few uh, building projects lined up in the future too. So anyways, that's going to be everything for me today. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.